uh, who was from a Latin American country and, and uh, she was very aggressive. Uh, she hated Christians, she would chase Christians, she even killed Christians. Yeah. One day she went to a Christian meeting and this Marxist uh, heard the gospel preached by Louis Palou and she found that she was convicted of a sin and she, she found Jesus. She found forgiveness, her bitterness was taken away, her anger was taken away, her hatred was taken away when she met with Jesus. And if you meet with Jesus today, you can find that peace and hope today. Paul said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that which perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. And many have looked upon the gospel as foolishness. They've seen Jesus Christ dying on a cross. They've seen him dying on that cross and shedding his blood. And they've seen and thought his foolishness. But that is the wisdom of God. There is the understanding of who God is. His love and his greatness. And his love for you. And how much he loved you. And gave his life for you. And it says here. For it is written. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And God has brought the wisdom of the wise to nothing. Men have wisdom and their wisdom has been brought to nothing because men never thought of the cross. Men never thought of the greatness of God. They never thought how great God was. They never saw his wisdom and what his wisdom was like, that his wisdom is majestic and his wisdom is not like our wisdom because God's wisdom chooses the foolishness of this world. And the cross is foolishness to the world, but it's, it is the wisdom of God. Because there is weakness on that cross, but that is the power of God. And the weakness of God is the strength of God. That there, when Christ was dying on that cross, he was dealing with your sin. The things that you've done wrong. Now, we've all got a, a propensity, a desire within our hearts to do wrong. Uh, we, we, we have children that rebel against their parents. We have people that rebel against the state. It's in our nature to be rebellious. You get a little five-year-old and it will rebel against what you say. It won't want to do what you want it to do. You have to correct it. And we're like that with God. God gives us the Ten Commandments and we break those commandments. Don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Honour your father and mother, honour the Sabbath day. These are the Ten Commandments. Have no other gods before me. Do not use the Lord's name in vain. And we rebel against God and we break these commandments and we become guilty. And when you become guilty, God has to judge. If, if you drive a car past a red light and it's on red light and you drive your car and it's on red light and the police see you do it, they're going to come and they're going to arrest you and they're going to come and give you a fine. And God has a red light, his Ten Commandments. And if we break those commandments, he will arrest us, he will judge us. But the good news is, instead of God arresting you and judging you, Jesus died in your place. Jesus died in your place. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I thank God that I 